is um, my name is Robert Ferry, and I'm one of the directors of the Land Art Generator, along with Elizabeth Minoyan, the other founding co-director of Loggy. And with us we have I'm Matt Sundquist. I'm the general manager of Fly Ranch. And I'm Zach uh, Cerebello. I'm the operations manager of Fly Ranch. So this is an informational session just to um, update folks about the Loggy 2020 Fly Ranch Design Challenge and answer any questions that you might have. And we're going to let Matt kick it off. All right. Um, I will start a little bit with a little background on Fly. Um, so Burning Man has happened consistently in the same place, mostly in the Black Rock Desert uh, since the 90s. Um, in 1997, though, the event moved to Fly Ranch which is about 15 miles away from where we usually host Black Rock City. And really since that time, but before then, people imagined what it would look like for Burning Man to have a more permanent place where Burning Man activities could happen year round. Um, and in 2016, after a few years of discussions and with the help of some generous donors, Burning Man Project, the nonprofit that manages the event and a lot of the global undertakings that we have came into stewardship of Fly Ranch. And since the around then, Zach and I started in 2017 and have worked with a few other folks, um, most notably uh, Lisa Beers, who is the Fly Ranch land steward, who laid a lot of the original research down for what was happening at Fly. And we really, from the beginning, wanted to figure out how we could work in accord with the nature that's out there already and how we could avoid building up a lot of reliance on infrastructure that we might not want to have permanently there that has fossil fuels associated with it or waste. And so we've been having small campouts for the past two years to research the property and do education and science and sustainability out there. And most of what we've done has just bubbled up from the community where people have said that they wanted to have an event out there, that they wanted to build something out there, that they wanted to put in some art out there. And that's been pretty informal to date. Um, but a year and a half ago now, we had an event that Elizabeth and Robert came to and they gave a talk about what they were doing. And they hadn't been to Black Rock City yet and they had come in through introductions from Dusty and from Crimson Rose, who you'll hear from later today, and they came out and uh, everyone really saw and believed in what they were doing and saw the potential for it coming to Fly Ranch of running design challenges there that were at scale and that could help us focus our energy into very specific areas without there being top-down guidance or master planning that we ourselves would do where we could facilitate the process. And so since then, we've been in discussions. And then last year, we launched what is now open, which is the Loggy 2020 Design Challenge that we're hosting at Fly Ranch. Um, and the idea is to engage the community and invite people to build infrastructure out there around food and water and power and shelter and waste management. And these are constrained for the basic needs of what we have right now at Fly to be out there. So we know that we're going to need those to have people out there. And if we're going to do it sustainably, then that's going to take more effort than just bringing out temporary infrastructure. But more than that, we want to have it be something that's appropriate to the site itself. And that's specific to the site itself. And that takes account of the history of the land. Um, and we encourage everyone who's coming out to stop at the Pyramid Lake Paiute History Museum, which is about an hour before you come to Fly Ranch. And we really want to be in accord with the history of the land and being stewards of it rather than thinking of ourselves as owners or ways that we can extract value from it, but really how we can be regenerative. And that then goes hand in hand with Burning Man Project's overall roadmap, which is to have by 2030 to have Burning Man be globally regenerative, where we can say that it's better for the earth for Burning Man to exist than to not exist, where we're carbon negative. So we're doing carbon sequestration and drawing down more carbon than we're emitting, which right now is probably about 100,000 tons of CO2 per year, and we're doing globally sustainable waste management. So that's a really complementary part of the way that we're doing LAGI and how we want it to work in accord with Black Rock City and with Fly Ranch. 
Um, so over the next three years, this will really come together where we'll have the time for people to submit ideas until the end of May. Then we have 31 judges who are now, I guess, 32, whose names you can see on our website. Um, and those judges will vote after we've shortlisted a number of finalists. Um, and then we will select pro those top projects from there and then begin a process of zoning and permitting and planning to build prototypes on site at Fly Ranch in 2021 and then expand from there in 2022. Um, we also have two secondary sites that we've designated. One is the Burning Man Work Ranch, which is adjacent to Fly Ranch, which is a 200 acre ranch that has a substantial amount of power needs um, and where there are people living and working year round who are the backbone of what happens at Black Rock City. And uh, we already work with them in a lot of ways and we have thought about how we could have complementary infrastructure with them. And then the other piece of uh, property that's a secondary site is a 360 acre parcel of property that's right on the edge of Gerlach. Um, it also is stewarded by Burning Man Project and it has access to the playa, uh, it has access to the grid, and it's uh, further explored and explained both in a map that is in the Burning Man Project roadmap. If you just Google Burning Man Environmental Sustainability and search for 360 acres, you can see a map. And then there's also maps of it on the Lagi site. And so both of those are secondary sites that we're happy to explore with people as well. Um, so throughout the next hour and change, we'll be taking questions, we'll be having some celebrity pop-ins from different people who work in Burning Man. And that's all I thought I would say. That's great. Um, I want to say, if, if, for those of you that are following along at home, uh, we're broadcasting live out of BMHQ in San Francisco. A really great resource is the loggy2020flyranch.org. A lot of the information we're going to be going through is there. It's, it's information on the jurors, the sites that have been selected. There's a lot of cool maps. There's a Q&A that's already up there. Uh, we'll take some of this information that pops up here um, and add it to that Q&A. Uh, we're running both Facebook Live and a Zoom, uh, for those of you not on Facebook. Um, if you have questions or you want more information, you want us to dive into something, you want to comment on how lovely we look, you can do that in the chat, uh, and we will respond appropriately. Um, Elizabeth and Robert, I would love for you to introduce um, to folks that aren't in the know about Loggy and what you have been doing and sort of how this connection came to it. Sure. Uh, so we founded the Land Art Generator Initiative, uh, well, conceptualized it in 2008 when we were living in Dubai and really inspired by the landscape there and all of the incredible initiatives. But um, also we came to learn that there were Emirati land artists, um, which is a movement that we're both incredibly inspired by. So we uh, thought you know, we, we could see all of the challenges around meeting our uh, global goals of uh, net zero future. And some of that involved pushback because of the aesthetics of renewable energy. And it got us thinking about ways that we might proactively participate in that conversation. We launched our first design competition in 2010, inviting interdisciplinary teams around the world to reimagine our energy landscapes as public art and place making tools and places of wow and wonder. You know, what does it look like when an artist sits at the helm of designing our energy future and our energy landscapes today? So climate change is a big bummer and a lot of the conversation <laughs> about, about, about our future is a bit gloomy and doomy and apocalyptic and we understand that because it's scary. Um, but we also um, are, the, something that's really behind the Land Art Generator is, is allowing you and the public and this entire network of creatives around the world to paint a beautiful picture of a world in carbon balance that is awesome, that we can all want to live in. Because if we're going to create positive change, we have to give people something to desire. We can't just have um, you know this fear factor, which makes us all deer in headlights, and we don't know what to do about it. So this is your opportunity. We were so I'm glad when the Fly Ranch team reached out to us because um, we had that first weekend out at Fly and just were in love with that landscape. There's so much potential there. Um, one of the metaphors we started thinking about early on was, um, so over the last 200 years, we've, you know, the, the, the petroleum um, culture and economy 
has done some amazing things to lift up people out of poverty and, and provide greater health care and access to, to, to many things. And that was, um, that was an era in our, in, our, in, our, in, our, in our evolution as human civilization and an important one. So we don't want to vilify it all entirely. But then we woke up to the fact that we were really causing a problem. And so now we're going to move forward into a new culture. And so what Fly Ranch represents to us is this beautiful opportunity to pretend as if you had encountered a blue marble planet Earth with, uh, with a part per million of uh, 280 of carbon, which is what it was pre-industrial. And if you had to start over and do it right, provide all of the energy, all of the things that we need for human thriving, but do it in a way that is in a complete circular design harmony with nature. Learning from nature, biomimetic you know, design strategies, um, how could we put these five major categories of energy, water, food, shelter, and regeneration, zero waste, into beautiful works of destination art in this incredible landscape, respecting the land, respecting its history. So it's a, it's a tall order, but we know you're all up, up to it. Um, so we're really excited about what's going to happen May 31st. Wonderful. Um, and we do have a couple questions rolling in, but first, I wonder if you could speak briefly to um, to the categories that we have and, and some of the things that fall within that and then the process by which we selected uh, within that 4,000 acres that we have, those that are designated for use and what the primary and secondary differences are on, on properties. Yeah. Yeah, so there are three tiers of the design site. Um, most commonly in a competition, there's a site boundary. You can do what you want in there and you can't do anything outside of it. This is more of a tiered approach, um, which is a response to the unique nature of the site. There are areas of Fly Ranch that have been historically used, utilized for various purposes. Um, one, of course, being the 97 event, um, which um, left more of a trace than every other Burning Man event, because my understanding, correct me if I'm wrong, is that uh, everyone got kicked off before they could do a real good sweep. Um, so you'll actually find some historic artifacts on that site. It's really kind of interesting. It's a living, his, living museum out there. Um, so there's one, one portion of the primary boundary, which is the area we'd like for teams to focus their attention to most. Um, and that's on the, on the site plan, you'll find that in yellow. One of the sites is, is at that 97 um, Burning Man event area. Another is the central camp which is the area that's most utilized today for weekends and events. And you'll find the Art of Steam um, camp sauna out there right now still. Um, and that's kind of historically the ranch, the center of agricultural activity on the site. And then to the north, there's areas around the parking area and the area that's used to get water for Burning Man events uh, for Black Rock City. The water comes from Fly Ranch and it has for quite a long time, actually. Um, so you, you've got that also pre-disturbed area and that you'll find as a large expanse in yellow on the site plan. Those are the th three primary areas. There are a couple of offshoots. They're all tied together with, um, with connectors so that it's all really one contiguous boundary. And we think there's a lot of interesting opportunities there. Then you'll find an area in green, which is a secondary boundary. That expands the potential energy landscapes and food landscapes um, so that you can propose interventions there that are, are not as um, deep foundation, not as um, you could propose shallow foundations, you could propose things that are a little bit more uh, light touch. And then there's a boundary that's grayed out, and that's a conservation boundary. And we're really asking that you do not propose any interventions in that landscape, that we preserve that um, in perpetuity. The only thing that, that might be possible to propose there would be conservation programs that reestablish, um, that, that pull back from invasive species and reestablish native species um, and, and help protect the habitats that exist there. Do you want to talk about the work that Lisa's done out there? might be a nice opportunity. Yeah. Um, so Dr. Lisa Beers, uh, we know her as Skirpus. Um, she was the first Burning Man Land Fellow as part of the Burning Man Fellowship Program. 
Uh, and she spent 14 months out on the Fly Ranch property, really getting to know it and studying the flora and the fauna and the weather and patterns and the instrumentation we have on our website. Um, uh, over, over 100 types of plants that she identified, over 100 types of birds that she identified, dozens of mammals, um, recorded those, mapped those out. A lot of that information is available on the Fly Ranch website, which is flyranch.burningman.org, um, and gave a real uh, wide, uh, but fairly preliminary environmental baseline of what's there in on that property, what are the areas where we can start to have some of these activities, uh, and have less uh, of an impact, what areas we need to be sensitive around and preserve, particularly around towards the, the wetlands. Um, and she has been a critical partner in giving a voice to the property um, and really speaking on behalf of that special place and then working and coordinating uh, a lot of different academic or scientific studies that are happening there, whether it's stuff that we've been doing with the University of Nevada, Reno or the Desert Research Institute. Um, and a lot of that information and data was used and is available um, on the loggy 2020 flyranch.org website in the supplemental material section and some other sections so people can really see what's there. And there's um, analyses of water and of soil, um, of elevation and things like that that are a really nice asset for people to be able to use. And all of that content and uh, deep research that Lisa was doing out there is really what helped to inform the site boundaries. So just to reiterate that we ask teams respect those boundaries um, because the research is, uh, has been done and we know collectively where the best sites are to have these interventions. And it's even the yellow boundary is a massive area. So you're not constricted that much in creativity by staying in that area. If you take the entirety of, of Fly Ranch, um, it's the size of a major city. It would overlay on top of San Francisco from the Embarcadero to the zoo, um, New York City from um, Central Park North to Lower Manhattan. It's a huge site. And so the yellow boundary itself is pretty large. So we've got a question on that from Emily, who said that she noted the great detail given to the site on, on the website and is asking whether they're meant to choose specifically where on that site or just propose a design in general. We like the design um, or a design that's informed by its local site um, and the context um, may end up having a lot of value so we encourage you to be responsive to the local context of the site and and think about how your intervention relates to the exact area if you'd like to propose an idea that could be either modular or in, or could be located in, in multiple places that's okay too mm -hmm. um that that's certainly within that 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 there's no there's no reason why eat one or the other approach would um, have value in itself for those reasons, uh, and it would be the, the design itself that would make them stand out, I guess. Thank you. Okay. Um, we have another question around balancing um, the, the artistry versus the functionality, and where in that certain people should choose to, to submit their proposals, um, and how long should people be designing for? You know, in the, in the Black Rock City context, there's a very concrete 10 days. Right. And in this context, it's a, it's a little different. Um, so perhaps we can give some insight into people in the, the horizon of their thought as they're yeah, early right. designs. The first question we do get often. Yeah, well, these are infrastructure artworks. So they're, they should, um, ideally, there's going to be a carbon footprint to them, whether that's light or not. And so the longer their life cycle, the more they'll be able to offset that and start to be net positive. Um, so we encourage long view um, thinking. Um, we love hundred year designs. Um, that's not to say that 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 it will necessarily last that long. Um, and we, we also encourage you to think about how your intervention will age over that kind of long long life. Um, what will um, three generations hence that don't yet even exist as an idea, how will they interact with it? I think that those kind of questions are interesting. And to talk about the, that balancing of um, being infrastructure versus art, uh, it's a really good question. Um, my guess is that there are going to be plenty of calls for art for the site that is not infrastructure. Mm -hmm. So we do want to make sure that you're utilizing the technologies that we're asking for in these systems. Um, 
but it has to make sense at this site. It aesthetically, culturally, conceptually needs to blend appropriately. And of course, none of us have the answer today, which is why we've put out this design challenge to you. Um, but um, they, they, they have to be creative outcomes. It has to work, though, too. So That's actually, right. the answer is both. It's tough. And through the years running the Land Art Generator Design Competition and seeing all the amazing ideas that have come in, there's there's always a, a, a gradiated scale between whimsical and, and conceptually profound to um, very um, functional and focused on utility. And the projects that, that really sing are those that, that meet perfectly in the middle and have this wonderful marriage between um, profound concept and storytelling and and use technology that's, that's tested in ways that, you know, simple, honest gesture of use of, of that as a media for creative expression. So you're, um, you're really bringing something that you know and prototyping process will validate, will work, um, and will be something that can be well maintained over time um, and grow into the site. Um, and a follow up question on proposals. Um, are designs encouraged to make one proposal for the site or can propose multiple ideas geographically spread out? Are you looking for people to just say, here's our one thing, or can they submit multiple ideas? And should those be independent, unique submissions or collective submissions? So a team defined as a group of people who enter. Uh, represented by the primary point of contact, that person who registers and uploads, a team is only allowed one submission. That submission can be multifaceted. It can include um, interventions across the site that are unique um, in their own composition and their own expression. So um, we encourage that kind of, of thinking. Would you agree with that? Yeah. Awesome. Um, through the door. Who you got, yeah, Matt? Tabna. Hi. Hi. How are you? I'm well. How are you? Awesome. Good. We're just diving into questions. Some really good questions. Oh, oh. I brought notes, so maybe I don't have to use them. Oh, where are you? As Matt was saying, Tabna works uh, on our Black City, Rock City operations team. He's been out to Fly Ranch a number of times. Yeah. Um, for some events, and is like one of the, one of the rock stars who helps hold it down. Um, I don't know if you want to say anything about your experience at Fly Ranch or like what you might see coming out of Design Challenge. Or... Well, um, I just think that it was it's just an amazing space to mm -hmm. be in, first of all. Um, the first time I went, I went through the volunteer leadership retreat. And so it felt kind of like a work retreat for me, but it was nice and relaxed. And I felt like the ranch gave a space for people to actually like have a conversation with each other bond better with each other outside of these four walls. Um, the second time I, I came to the ranch was for the Writers Emerging um, Writing Retreat, um, which was a writing retreat for about 20 to 30 um, women of color. And I mean, it was it was a blast. It was, it was really interesting to bring out um, some good friends of mine that um, have never camped before. They didn't have any affiliation with Burning Man. They didn't. Some didn't even know what Burning Man was. Some have never even camped before, put up a tent before. So it was nice to see um, those type of new experiences on that land. Um, it was also nice to see them experience the geyser and just things that the natural like space and land that it provided for us that people from New York City or people from Phoenix would never really experience with their friends. So it was just nice that Yoda, a longtime burner, had presented this to um, to you guys. And it was really, uh, I don't know, it was transformal. It was transforming for me because I, I didn't really think that Burning Man would even offer a space for us to commune and have a good time like that and really just exchange experiences with each other um, on a writing platform. So it was it's just to it was totally different than I think that a lot of people that are engaged with Burning Man they present to the ranch. So I hope that, that you guys will 
provide those types of experiences for other groups that's not affiliated with Burning Man. So it was really great to be invited. Cool. Yeah, what a great experience. Yeah, it was fantastic. Yeah, well, I mean, I would say that our first time out to Fly Ranch was, and it was our first time to be introduced to the Burning Man community, quite mm -hmm. frankly. So uh, it, it had that feel of being able to have really um, wonderful conversations with folks yeah. who were complete strangers yeah. and in a way that broke down barriers and was warm and welcoming. Exactly. And it was incredible our first time out there. Exactly. Yeah, hopefully, I mean, I feel like there are so many different other areas in the Bay Area that you can try to cultivate those relationships, but it's just bringing people out of their homes, yeah. bringing people out of their, their comfort zones and just showing them that the land is just really a place. It's a, it's a forefront. It's an incubator for us to just commune and just exchange ideas. That's really helpful. One of the questions that we've already gotten through email is, well, what's the program? And we talk about this a bit in the brief. And, um, and so it's really helpful for you to talk about your experience from what a potential programming yeah. can be like. And mm -hmm. sky is the limit. And I think that's something to reiterate is that everybody on this on this webinar, everyone in this room, everyone in this building is all a part of defining what that could be. Exactly. And so it's the, the the process of this challenge is going to help inform what that is, and it's going to provide places for the kinds of activities like you're describing to continue on. So that's awesome. Yes, thank you. And it'll also provide places for people who don't know how to pitch a tent. <laughs> yeah. Although that's right. a great it's, a, it's as simple as that. <laughs> it's as simple as that. <laughs> thank you for having me. Thank you. We have a we have a comment on our oh. Facebook Live. Jaya says, sweet tea. Oh! <laughs> hey, girl. My friend Jaya, she was also involved with the writer's retreat oh, okay. as well. So um, I'm glad that I was able to actually tell my friend about this this um, event quick, super quickly. She was like, of course I will come. Of course. It's it's just nice to be around like black and brown people to where we can just feel safe. Yeah. And that was such a safe place for us to be. Yeah, and quiet. And yes. She came back the next week. She came back the next week. Yes. Yeah. Were there any um, stories that came out of it that were set in that landscape? I'm just curious. Um, I wouldn't say that there were. I think that there are many stories that grew from yeah. that experience. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I think that it was interesting because I feel like a lot of people got out of their comfort zones once they saw like Baba Yaga's mm -hmm. installation. Mm -hmm. Never seen that in their life, didn't even know what an installation was. Um, so one of our writing prompts was to go to Baba Yaga's mm -hmm. and just write a story on what this installation is. And I think that was what sparked people's minds. Like, like okay, I can get out of my nonfiction. I can get out of my fiction. I can get out of my science fiction. I can get out of my own head and create a different space for myself. So I think that's what, what came out of that. That's awesome. Um, yeah. That's so great. It's such an awesome artwork. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was yeah. art creating yeah. art. Yeah, yeah, it's so yeah. good. Yeah. Big big shout out to uh, Sprocket and the Jenny crew that, that brought that out there. Oh, uh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Yeah. Have a good week. Yeah. yeah. If you'd like to, to see that installation in context of fly, um, well, there's uh, Steve Tice has made a 360 virtual tour um, that you can. There's an it's added to. Where will be? It'll be posted this evening when we get back to Seattle. We'll go live with that. Um, so check out the supplemental materials page tomorrow to see this virtual tour. Great. It's and awesome. Baba Yaga um, is just a really wonderful example of the kind of art programming and the landscape that will continue and exist you know in addition to this this infrastructural challenge we're going to take tim berry's question really quickly if that's okay mm -hmm. yeah so tim says um please with the five categories and two um, major sites primary boundary secondary boundary what level of detail is expected for the three boards and the and the, and the narrative so we'll tell you that in the past with three boards there's uh, not a lot of pressure. We sometimes a board is a single image, so it doesn't have to be complex. 
Um, we do like to see diagrams that help to explain technology and uh, the function, but all three boards don't have to include that. Yeah, and what we call this is um, it's an early concept um, in terms of the design process. This is a sketch, an idea. Um, we don't expect a lot of, of detail in terms of, how, of structure and um, systems. Like Elizabeth said, um, really simple explanatory diagrams that talk about how it works are very helpful. And the, and the, and the written narrative, um, again, should, should tell the story of your proposal. What, what is it that, uh, that people will experience when they visit your work in that landscape? What is it that you want to impart and... Maybe and describe the technology, anything that helps the jurors to un and the selection committee to understand what your proposal is. Yeah, it's a, it's a pitch to the jury uh, in a way. We have oh, a Kim Cook. Again. All right. Hi. Hi, Hi. 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 How are you? Great. Welcome. Thank you. Nice to see you both. Nice to see you. you. Of course. I checked out on you the other day. <laughs> we kept... Distracted. <laughs> Vaporizing. <laughs> so we're hanging out, just chatting with the world. Hello, world. Um, this is Kim Cook. Um, I'd love you to introduce yourself and then just talk about um, maybe any experience you had at or with Fly and maybe some of the things you just might come out of this design yeah. challenge. That sounds cool. Uh, so to introduce myself, as of the last four years, I've been the director of art and civic engagement for Burning Man. Prior to that, I was the president of the Arts Council of New Orleans, and a lot of why Burning Man brought me in was to think about cultural transmission, that if uh, the event in the desert has sparked a, a global cultural movement, how does that translate into other contexts? And I feel like Fly is a real live experiment of like moving beyond the desert, in the desert. <laughs> it's kind of paradoxical. And some of the influence that Fly has brought to the table, I think, is that we can change the period of time, right? So Burning Man as an organization was very much structured on an annual basis and still very much is influenced culturally, internally, and organizationally by that period structure. Fly brings into focus long-term thinking and how was a place before, during, and after our presence in that place. So we can be very conscious and very thoughtful in ways that now can also influence what is it we're talking about and how are we thinking about ourselves in, in global terms. So the Land Art Grant Initiative for me is uh, a test, right? It's a test of temporal experiments that have lasting repercussions. Mm -hmm when we test and we try and we do things in the context of fly, we are actually setting precedent for how we can test and try and do things in the world at large. And one of the beautiful things that is in the network of Burning Man is a global group of people who for me, the one common denominator that I found is people who are fully living. They're fully invested in living and in and whatever and however that expresses itself. And in many cases, that's around intentional community, around place, around co-creation, around new systems of um, civic uh, environments and so forth. And so to bring myself back to that sounded like not an introduction. That sounded like answering all the other questions. <laughs> the way that that ties into me is that I feel like my specialty is thinking about um, how place shapes experience. And so the built environment is a social construction. People make decisions and we can create acupuncture points. We can create interventions, intersections and disruptions in positive ways that can facilitate and foster how we live together in the world as a whole, how we create encounters, how we create opportunities for self-expression, how we build and co-create community. And so I do that by writing. I do that by working with Burning Man. I'm also currently working with a, a creative studio in, Mon in Montreal called Moment Factory mm -hmm. to create um, an experiential sort of uh, artwork. And, I teach creative placemaking for the National Consortium for Creative Placemaking, and 
Yeah, and I uh, introduced y'all to one of your jurors, who is the fabulous, brilliant Jason Schubach, yeah, who's yeah. been friends with me for, and I've been friends with him for, I don't know, more than a decade, and he's here in 11. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, Kim is serving as uh, one of a, a group of technical advisors. She also mentioned the jurors. We're getting some questions this morning if you could talk about just the timeline and process of what that shortlisting into selection into grant process just looks like. Yes, so everything will come in on May 31st. Uh, anywhere in the world. Or uh, earlier. Or earlier. Don't be we shy. Early submissions. Don't be scared. Yeah. Um, and uh, something else to note mm -hmm. quickly is that um, after you upload and you've done it two weeks early, if you are if you wake up in the middle of the night and you're like, oh no, I should have done something, you can always swap your files out until the deadline. So there's no pressure there. Um, then everything comes in. Um, then there'll be a technical advisor round, which wonderful people like Kim, and we've got dozens of others who have specialties in various categories. Um, we'll be going through and adding comments and, um, and, and, and basically reflecting on their They're not during. making decisions. They're just providing feedback so that we understand technical feasibility of the submissions. And that will be a critical component to this. I have no power. Oh, you've got power. Perfect. Uh, but what are you? Uh, Vulnerability is my specialty. What are you excited about seeing? Like it, you know, well, actually, what I'm excited about is that um, what I hope that people want to have happen with the work that they're submitting and will see as optimal is the opportunity for others to learn from the learning that you have done. So yes. when you are creating something, you're gifting the body of knowledge that led to the moment when you were able to conceptualize and, and deliver this idea. And I think one of the amazing things about Fly and about Burning Man is that it often creates the opportunity to transmit. And for me, like I'm committed in knowledge transmission, like that is meaningful to me. Because if we're creating solutions in microcosms that can be scaled, then we're creating global change. And when I was in New Orleans, one of the things that I really observed is there's a lot of micro enterprise, a lot of people with brilliant ideas with one or two or three total in their organization. And it's hard to achieve scale and critical mass when you're an isolated piece of a large, large puzzle. So I think that the work that comes in that I'm excited about is not so much because I'm excited about this type of work or this type of solution. I'm excited about how this concentration of effort can translate into something that has lift up and overcomes inertia and is seen and um, capitalized on, if you will. I know that's probably a kind of funny word, but by others in, in, a, in a learning kind of way. Yeah, we agree with that and 100% uh, agree with that and know that the Burning Man community is massive and thinkers and doers and um, change makers and we also feel that the portfolio, the overall portfolio that comes in for 2025 Ranch is has the opportunity to change the world. Like These are ideas that people around the world are going to grab onto and say yes, we have an opportunity to make real change. So, so yeah. there's a sense for me okay. of a phenomenal gratitude that um, people are willing, you are willing to take the time to bring your thoughts together, express them to us, and know that whether or not people become a part of Lagi 2020 um, at Fly, that the, the gift of you sharing your thoughts and ideas with us is something that is, that's, that excites me. That's nice. All right, I'm gonna rock and Thanks, roll on out, but thanks, thanks for letting you. me drop in Absolutely. on your, it's my first Facebook Live. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank You're you welcome. for dropping the knowledge. Thank you. Also, we have a hello to you from Amy, who we had um, uh, a meeting with this morning. Can you say your last name? So, Amy had she passed a hello to Oh, you. nice. You yeah. were in Reno this morning? I know. To here. Oh, that was great. Down the street. <laughs> I'm confused. All right. So, so glad nice to you, see you. Nice yeah, to see you. Yeah, thank you. Thanks, Kim. So glad that Kim brought up the idea of, of replicability for the world because it's not something that we had talked about yet. And that's so important um, that this. This is definitely site specific. It's definitely responsive to this amazing place, which is on the boundary edge of, of alkaline flat and desert mountains. Um, 
and mm, is flushed into the water. Hey, Crimson. I don't want to interrupt. Hello. 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 Hi, guys. Right. Crimson Rose in the house. Um, Burning Man legend? I mean, what's your, what's your current? Uh, cultural founder. Cultural founder, Crimson Rose. Yeah. Um, <laughs> who not only has been one of the, the drivers behind the project, even prior to acquiring the land, but has really helped hold a lot of the spirit and the energy of it. Um, and uh, we, I would love it if we would love it if you could share a little bit about that space and what it means to you, and, and maybe what you hope to to see come out of this design challenge. Oh my goodness, there's so much potential, <laughs> really. But it, yes, it's been a dream for 20 years for sure. Um, especially when we had the event over 20 years, we had the event there in '97. But we also learned that we have to really uh, be good stewards of the earth um, and to tread lightly. Even though we may physically own the property, it, it doesn't mean that we can just do anything. We have to really be sensitive to creating anything there. And the fact that it really is an incubator for starting new ideas and how do we tread lightly on the land, but also how do we be sustainable and take Black Rock City into a whole other realm. And I love the two of you being a part of it, really sort of being the instigators for um, helping us, you know, go down this amazing journey. I really love it. Yeah, well, it's... Thanks for inviting us. Yeah. <laughs> it is a journey. And Burning Man, um, one of the 10 principles, leave no trace, has always had this ethos of, of responsibility. Um, and so it's a really interesting moment for the whole world to take part in this uh, transformation of that uh, to a global scale, because that's really what we're all a part of here. And how can we learn from other people of what they imagine could happen and to be open to all of that? I think that's, that's incredibly important, that everybody's idea is valuable of how we really go to the next level with yeah. all this. Yeah, I like the way you framed it, Matt. Um, in one of the documents it talks about, well, we could just make a decision as an organization and hire some consultants to fulfill the program that we give them and and then do bids. And um, But that's just not the way this organization works. Yeah. Yeah. If, if we don't take the community's input, then we've lost. Because mm -hmm. that's really where we have to stand. I mean, I feel like we're sort of this, again, it's sort of like this blank slate of what's going to work and not be afraid to try something. And see if it works, let's keep doing it. If it doesn't, OK, that didn't work. Let's not do that. You know, mm -hmm. But that leaves it so open for so much. Yeah, like in 1991, you could never have imagined what the 2019 Black Rock <laughs> City could look like. No one person there on the beach could have ever imagined. Right. Um, and so I think that Fly Ranch will have that same sort of, no one can imagine what it will be like 20 years from now. Oh my That's the exciting part. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the site, what has happened there and what's going to happen in the future, you know, we, we are a platform stewards. And in that way, what's happening there, whether it's the art, like Bobby Yager, the events that are happening, are things that are brought forth by the community and, and offered and organized, and we find the best way to support that. Um, and everyone's contributed ideas. Um, I even hear you want to, maybe we're going to do a labyrinth out there? Uh, we're proposing a 65-foot labyrinth, which means it's wide enough to actually have a wheelchair uh, nice. awesome. as well. So yeah. the land has to be really flat. And mm -hmm. finding the right location, you know, the right energy. Mm -hmm. Will, Roger, and I went and walked the area, and uh, we think we have a couple of spots. So well, but, your, your but, labyrinth is magical. Thank you. Thank you. So the thought of when you're walking it and seeing the full moon rise mm. over the mountain range, I think will just mm. <laughs> add spirit to everyone. You know? yeah. So, and it's and it's a very easy way for people to participate, and I think that's I think that's what's really important <clears throat> is how we invite the community in <clears throat> on multiple levels as well. Yeah. So. Thank you. Yeah. Any other thoughts or reflections? Uh, I'm trying not to put in my own <laughs> things. Any questions that, that, <laughs> that come tonight on the field? Um, I think you know, there's some questions about people were asking about um, 
replicability of stuff that's been in Black Rock City and bringing that to Fire Engine, how appropriate is that? Or like, what's what's that relationship in the art sort of world, infrastructure world? Well, certainly we're, we're <laughs> encouraging people to be instigators and there's some amazing artwork that has developed. Um, maybe there's a way of, of creating something like an art park. I don't want to call it that, but we don't have the name for it. But how do you bring art there that people could play with or you know, play on or would stimulate their mind? But I think it's a fine balance between what would actually go on fly ramp so that it's sometimes it could be a dichotomy, sometimes it could be something that's so subtle. And especially with Laggy, I mean, the, the idea of, of the minds of the architects and the engineers and all of the amazing people that have creative ideas that have that knowledge to actually be a part of it, too, is really, really exciting. Wonderful. Yeah, that, that comes to the question that we've already had um, regarding site specificity and uniqueness. So one of the design guideline requirements is that this be um, a work that is is responsive to the brief and is not something that has already been done in its totality somewhere else in the world. Because we feel that it's important that um, the, part of the design process be a reflection of that landscape. It's so profound. Um, that's and, not and the culture and yeah. the history and everything about that site. Yeah. yeah. Um, but that's not to say that you can't bring your own f fingerprint and your own design yeah. style and and incorporate things you've done on the playa at, at, at Burning Man before, but uh, we just want you to, to bring them in in a way that's 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 unique and that's regenerative. Um, yeah, so it's not shutting down ideas, but we do want to make sure that it fits the site. Yeah. Wonderful. Thanks, Crimson. You're welcome. Um, some folks are asking about the, the use of materials on site mm -hmm. and the reuse of soil or branch material or other things that could be reincorporated into something, I don't know. Yes, local materials are the best materials, as long as it's done in a way that's sustainable and that doesn't have a negative impact on the ecology. So that's uh, kind of a, a loose answer. Um, but certainly, um, reuse of soils that are taken from a proposed excavation are excellent uh, use of rammed earth construction is one of the most sustainable methods. Um, and um, it would, it, that's what the prototyping process will, will help a lot with because the mix of that is really important. Um, and there aren't a lot of, um, of, of, of um, there's not a lot of local wood. The wood that's there is shrubby. Um, and um, so the resources on site are, are wonderful, but they might be a little bit limiting. Um, so, yeah, we welcome any proposal that uses local materials. Yeah, I find that most times when people ask a question of like, what should I do? It's the answer is it's up to you. Yeah. yeah. How, how you want to take that. Um, and I wonder if we should go just briefly into some details and the kinds of things that one might find in the categories that we've put out there. Um, and also how helpful of a resource that might be. Uh, to people that are that are pursuing that, we're getting people asking like, "Oh, is you geothermal? Or are you doing solar?" And then the answer is yes, 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 and yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So the what Elizabeth is holding there is the field guide to renewable energy technologies. Energy is one of the primary categories, um, um, and so that's one of the the things that the Fly Ranch aspires to, and it's and it's and it's. And its story is to be self-sufficient. Not it's not grid connected, so that's not even really an option. Um, so all of the energy that's generated on the site, electrical energy, heat energy, what have you, um, is going to need to be generated there locally. And so there's a lot of ways to do that. Um, this is a free PDF download um, on the Loggy 2020 Fly Ranch site. If you go to uh, both the supplemental materials page and the education tab, you'll be able to download this. And what's really awesome about this time is that the advancements in technology now are just incredible. You can use 
the power of the sun to generate electricity in ways that don't at all look like a solar panel that you think of as your typical you know, solar panel. The sky is the limit now with structural color laminations and face glass and all sorts Hinted. of technologies. So really, solar panels as a media for creative expression are um, unlimiting. It's like a whole Crayola palette of crayons of any color you could imagine. Um, anyway, yeah. Don't you think that, that this is the potential of creating new materials? Yeah. That if people are going to actually push it even further, I think, I think the potential is just amazing. Yeah, absolutely. Um, that's the, the other thing that we love in the in the creative process, especially interdisciplinary teams working together, is that um, through the years of the Land Art Generator Initiative, um, there have been a lot of amazing proposals, and all of them are available on the portfolio for your inspiration, that have used different types of technologies in unique ways, that when they come together, they become more than the sum of their parts, they become something even new and, and greater. So. Um, combining those five systems together is a really um, interesting thing to think about too because uh, there, there is water on site but it is also a limited resource how do you recycle how do you use the geothermal heat in ways that are most productive um, how do you incorporate that into the greenhouses it's a, it's a harsh climate and it has an incredibly severe winter uh, as can tell you. I'm there. just going to jump in and clarify something though about the design brief is that your design, your artwork does not have to address all five systems. You can, but you don't have to. You need to address at least one of the systems that we're asking for. Um, and the jurors aren't going to um, set your project aside because it hasn't addressed multiple systems. Exactly. It's a it's a complicated brief, and if you want to focus just on water, just on energy, or just on shelter, or food, or waste, uh, zero waste, that's great. So yeah, absolutely. Can't say that enough. Wonderful. Um, we are getting a lot of questions about people asking about the specifics of the site and um, you know where there's water, how much water there is, what kind of stuff. I'm just going to point people uh, to the resources that. Um, on both the flyranch.burningman.org website as well as the lobby2020 uh, flyranch.org website. There's just a, it's a ton of information. Yeah. Um, I will make a plug that we are doing site preview walks uh, at least once a month uh, that you can sign up for. You can find that on the website. Uh, but we also understand that not everyone can make it out there. It's, it's, um, you know, it's a, it's a long drive and people are busy. Um, and so we've done a lot to really try and make the site as accessible as possible for people, even remotely. So whether it's data visualizations about what's there or the Steve's incredible aerial 3D tour, um, you know, I want to encourage people to, to check it out. And we will also go through, if there's questions that we can't get to, we'll go through these questions, we'll update the Q&A document that's on that um, and be continually adding information as well as there's an email address that people can contact to have yeah. questions answered. And to reiterate, we'll be uh, uploading um, a change to the site tonight or tomorrow uh, to the supplemental materials page with Steve's virtual tour. And it is awesome and worth your time to uh, tool around and see the site in that way. It's really incredible. It's true, we've really done everything we can to make the site accessible to anyone around the world. Um, yeah. Everything within our power, we've done. <laughs> yeah, and there are thousands of panorama photographs, um, and they're all they all have the unique number, and that unique number corresponds to the site map on on, on the maps uh, link, so you can see exactly where each photograph was taken, and you can go on that walk virtually that way as well. It's very nice. Um, in terms of the limitations. Right, like we we want to encourage people's inspiration and their ideas, but we also have some limitations on what can happen there just by the county we're in and the zoning that we have. Yes. Um, and so I do want to point people towards the fact that we're in Washoe County, Nevada. Um, we uh, have a, a general rural zoning that there are some resources available for people to see what's in scope um, and what's possible to do there. Um, yeah, one of the links yeah, on the thanks. supplemental downloads is the Washoe County Development Code along with the, the zoning map, so you can familiarize yourself with that. Um, 
and in terms of the design brief itself, um, there's there's nothing that doesn't fit within that um, at the at the. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, we have another guest star popping in. Hey, 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 how's it going? Hey, Love. Love. Hello. It's just us and the internet. Oh, hi, internet. Uh, Pretty you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, rather notorious. Um, welcome. I would love you to introduce yourself. What do you do around here? Uh, and then what's what's been your experience with fly? What motivates you? What do you hope to see out of this? Sure. This whole thing. We're well, doing. hi. I haven't seen you guys since pretty yet. It's been a while. It's nice to see you. Uh, my name is Christopher Breedlove. Um, I'm the director of Civic Activation, and uh, one of those programs that I'm a big part of is Burns Without Borders. Uh, so it's super close to my heart that I've been involved in it for a long time. Um, and BWB has kind of, I think we really intentionally in the beginning thought about the ways in which uh, Fly Ranch and BWB could work together. Um, you know, I guess not everyone might know, so Burns Without Borders started uh, in 2005 in Hurricane Katrina, and it's kind of really been a representation of burners bringing their skills and their infrastructure out into the world and seeing other ways it could be utilized. And so when Fly started to come up, we started to think about how could we start to do some of that stuff with Fly. And so we've been doing, uh, we started with a bunch of work weekends um, out at Fly where we started to clean up the land. We did some simple build projects out there. And for the last year, uh, we've been doing campouts out there. And so I think we've hosted the largest campouts that we've had Certainly. since the 1997 event. Yep. Um, we had 199 people come out um, and have some really great conversations um, about disaster relief, about not-for-profit management um, in the spring, and then in the fall we had 99 people come out and talk about sustainability and regeneration, um, and also talking about this lighting challenge because a lot of people are really excited about it. Great. Cool. Yeah. Um, you're going to poke the BWB community to come up with some great proposals? Of course. <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think, you know, I mean, for me, I think, you know, Fly Ranch is this really amazing platform um, to play on top of for our community. Um, mm -hmm. And like I said, you know, BWB really represents about being not in Black Rock City. And so this is one of these really amazing platforms that we have to play on top of. And, you know, in conjunction, I don't know if you guys have talked about the sustainability roadmap. Um, that are bringing up for that briefly, but you know, as that's being uh, a much larger topic within our community, how can we look at Fly Ranch as possibly a prototyping zone for a lot of these things? Yeah. And so I think that's really exciting. And then, you know, to me, thinking about the global network too, you know, there's 90 other regional Burning Man events around the world, and some of them have started to purchase property. Uh, like the Africa Burn community is now on owned property. The LA community just purchased their own property. And so how could Fly Ranch and the things that are happening in this design challenge start to signal to these other events and these other communities what's possible too? Yeah. And I mean, to me, that ends up being a really massive global shift in, in how we not only think about our community, but how we think about infrastructure and events and all of those things. Yeah, yeah that's so exciting. That It's so great to hear. You know, I think that's what really excited us about uh, doing the 2020 Lobby Challenge at Fly Ranch was that it presented a unique opportunity for um, to you know broadcast and you know hundreds of thousands of people in the Burning Man community. So if you can tap that world, you've really made an impact. And uh, we think that the Burning Man community takes this conversation seriously and are looking forward to seeing how it. These outcomes are scaled around the world. So, one of the, yeah, sorry, I'd say one of the things that I have loved about um, being involved with Fly Ranch is just sort of interplay between Black Rock City and that space. You know, they're 12 miles apart, but um, there, there's in some ways a lot of differences. But each can be used as sort of a prototyping ground for the other. You know, we have run small scale experiments, whether it's with human waste or solar systems at Fly Ranch all year that we can then bring and start to scale out in Black Rock City. Um, and we have other best practices from, from the event that we're able to utilize and sort of rely on and, and test and say, oh, does this work over a longer context? Or does this work when it snows? Or does this work when, you know, suddenly it's it's not up for 10 days, but it's up for six months? Um, yeah, and the, the front lines of climate change have always been the foundation of Burners Without Borders starting Katrina. Um, and, and knowing that the experimentation that will happen on Fly Ranch will have resonance for those communities that are affected by changes that are happening in the world, fires, hurricanes, water rising, et cetera, 
and habitat and shelter, and how do we do that in a way that's completely in harmony with nature? That's we're so glad that, that you're so in, interconnected in this project. Um, and then the prototyping process at Fly Ranch as well. Um, we, we we know that, that that you are interested in the burning burners without borders is interested in, in being a part of that process as well through 2021. Um, there's a lot of resources that can come to bear from the experiences that come from that. Yeah, yeah that's a resource. I think just one other thing I would add is you know I'm I'm really excited I think because we you know the people who are building these theme camps and these art cars you know they already have a lot of really interesting things that are happening but all of them are meant for this kind of temporary nature and I love that tagline I think we use sometimes with fly which is a permanent home for a temporary community yeah. and so how can we start to think about what people have been iterating on year after year for these temporary kind of experiments and what does it look like to do these long term and, and how can we find these really amazing innovations that are probably already kind of latent within the community and, and give them a place to really blossom. Mm -hmm. I'm super excited about that. Yeah, and how, how do those ideas um, transform to become a part of the, what, what Fly Ranch is and its deep history and context. So it's really exciting. Yeah. Cool, bro. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, all right. Design it. <laughs> I'm super excited about this. So. Yeah, you and me both. At the hour, right? So, Thanks, guys. Uh, yeah, Thank um, we're gonna we're probably gonna wrap here about ten fifteen. But as I mentioned, you know, we'll roll through. Q and A's will be updated. I get the feeling this is not the last time we're gonna do this. We're gonna try and figure out a way to do this from Fly Ranch. Um, currently, don't have any internet reception there, but we'll figure it out. We promise. Um, and infrastructure. It'll be, yeah, infrastructure. It'll be great. Um, we're getting there. If you have an idea for a beautiful, sustainable design that. <laughs> Helps us get some connection receptivity out there, but doesn't interfere with the really are getting there. I just want to say um, the that the center camp since the two years ago when we were there or whenever that was is already transformed. They've got mm -hmm. solar, um, the composting toilets, the there's there's infrastructure is already budding in a really great way. Nice to see you. Another guest star. <laughs> Yay! Hello. That's Hi. Katie Hazard, everybody. Hey, world. Hey, how's Internet? Internet? I think we've met, maybe. <laughs> Once or twice, yeah. Um, welcome. Thank you for joining us. Sure, yeah. Um, love you to intro sort of your role here in Burning Man and the Burning Man art world and how maybe some of that might interplay with what's happening either at Fly or with the design challenge. Mm -hmm. you know what you're personally excited about? Sure, yeah. Um, my name is Katie Hazard, and I am the head of the Burning Man Arts Department, and I've been working here for about six years, going to Burning Man since 2000, so long-time member of the community. And at this time of year, we're actually reviewing all of people's proposals for funding for Black Rock City for Sorry, 2020. Yeah, yeah, so we're deep in the well. middle, not at all. Um, <laughs> We got 750 proposals wow. this year, which wow. is more than ever, which is really exciting. Um, we do a letter of intent process there, so we narrow it down to about 350, and we're going to notify folks the first week of March. But it's been really interesting timing having that review process happen at the same time as this opportunity is open, mm -hmm. because one of the things that's so amazing about art at Burning Man is that it's a temporary experience, but then that also has its own challenges, right? Like artists need to find somewhere to store things. and. Um, and it really is only able to be enjoyed for such a limited period of time. And so this opportunity, I think, is so interesting that a lot of artists are looking for ways to have work that's um, related to our culture and our values, but that also incorporates some of the sustainability that we're interested in here. But to have it have a more long-term home, I think it's really um, has a lot of appeal to people. Yeah. yeah. That's awesome. Do you... Um... Is there anything you particularly like to see? Mm -hmm. When I look at all the different categories, the ones that appeal to me the most are the power, just because that's something that I'm interested in in general in life and seeing what um, what alternatives we have to that. But then also the, the gathering spaces, one, yeah. the shelter. Um, we see a lot of proposals come in for Black Rock City that are a type of shelter, more of a you know gathering space of some sort or another. Um, so I feel there's like that's the thing that you know personally I love the idea of people coming together and community of gathering and that's so much what Burning Man is about. So the the context in which that happens really has a lot of impact on the way that of what, what unfolds when people are together. So I think it's really interesting to think about what what could 
that look like? What do we want to encourage in, in these interpersonal relationships and community? What can the space or the structure do to encourage the kinds of values that we think are interesting? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, um, you know, Baba Yaga, as an example again, mm -hmm. is, is, as you were saying, those, those works that orig their original intent was a temporary work at Black Rock City um, can um, find homes that live longer. Maybe not permanent per se, but right. Um, yeah. Well, nothing really is. Nothing yeah. Really is permanent, <laughs> yeah. But um, but it's really amazing to to see that happening already at Fly Ranch. Mm -hmm. yeah. And and then the opportunities still exist uh, for for Fly Artworks to find homes in cities too. That's a long mm -hmm. tradition now. Mm -hmm. That's really awesome. Mm -hmm. um, so it's just another extension of that, I guess. Mm -hmm. The other piece I find exciting is the environment or the landscape yeah. with which we're working. And when I think about one of the things I do is place all the artwork in Black Rock City, and there's over 400 pieces every year. And so thinking about how to put things in relationship to one another and what kind of thinking about what kind of experience you want people to have as they move through the, the world, I think that's a really interesting part about this process of. So with the land that we have, um, once we have all these amazing projects, how do they fit together? Yeah. I think will be a really fun part of the process. Yeah. Right. The, the taking of the individual projects and sort of putting them in a holistic experiential mm -hmm. system I think mean, is mm -hmm. really interesting. And the impact of that over time on the on Baba Yaga, something that I've noticed as I've been there over winter is, um, you know, it's, it's beautiful and otherworldly. Um, and now made even more so by the fact that a lot of crows have started to make it oh, to their, that's their, so their cool. home. Oh, so wow. you can drive out there and they're just circling above this this witch's tea house and like so cinematic. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, and so then you get that, that interplay of that the space and the nature. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, awesome. In addition to the artwork itself. So like mm -hmm. I'm I'm really excited for taking what the Burning Man community and these incredible artists have been doing for so long and, and getting to play with it in this different context and integrating mm -hmm. Artists and designers and engineers outside of that, and getting everyone to like make something really special. So, mm -hmm. yeah. How does your art become habitat? That's yeah. a really interesting mm -hmm. point. Okay. Right. I mean, art too. You think about well, what is the meaning of each piece? And when we ask people about the art they're bringing to Black Rock City, we ask them about the philosophy of their piece. And so each artwork on its own has its its own story and its own um, background. But what I like about this challenge is that. Everything that's part of it has a deeper meaning. I mean, we are in a real mess in the world right now. And so to have all these pieces, not just have the artistic and creative inspiration, but this really um, deeply important meaning that, you know, is, is critical in the world right now. Mm -hmm. That part, for me, I think is really exciting. Yeah. And it's going to be an important balance between the, the heaviness of what you're talking about this time in the world, um, but the playfulness that the culture yeah. brings, because we can't have one or the other. We have to have both at the same time. It's that richness of mm -hmm. that that importance and you know the profound problems that we face that we face uh, together. And how do we do that in a way that is inspiring and brings joy at the mm -hmm. same time? Yeah, that's so important, that. right? Yeah, yeah. You have to have room to laugh and put your heart into it. And, yeah, yeah. Uh huh. Wonderful. Thanks, Katie. Yeah, you're welcome. Katie, yeah, it. it's good to see you all. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Yeah, you too. <laughs> um, cool. We're about to hit time here. Um, as I mentioned, we will be doing this again, and there will be uh, opportunity for interaction, in-person events. There's walks that you can do. There's a lot of information available on the site. Hey. Doctor, doctor. Hello. Hello. Hi. Hi. I'm glad we didn't sign off. I want to oh. welcome you. Oh, we're not done. Special guest. Just Special kidding. Guest. <laughs> um, welcome to the table of humans and internet. Hello, humans. And um, internet. Internet's over there. <laughs> <laughs> we're the humans, in case there's. I got that. <laughs> um, we're just, you know, we've been talking about the design challenge and people that pop in and saying, you know, sort of what what their role in is Burning Man and what their role is outside of Burning Man and how those things might feed into this. Crazy little thing we're doing. Yeah. Um, so I would say for well, actually, I haven't met you. I am, introduce yourself. To I am Dr. Dame, um, and I'm Dr. Dame for you guys as well. So to let everyone know, I wear kind of two hats, uh, both in this organization and externally, I suppose, in life. 
where I came into Burning Man with the background of I'm a microbial biogeochemist by trade, um, or I should say by training. Um, my I got my PhD from Berkeley in 2014, and promptly came and worked at Burning Man. Yeah, <laughs> <That's what laughs> of course, because that's what I do with that. That's awesome. Um, so how is that? How yeah. is that? How does it really? Well, so now my other hat is I am the grant program manager where uh, because I used to ask for grants and I had grants to do my research uh, because research is not free, sadly. Uh, I knew the, the, the other end of grant making, which was the asking for, begging, pleading, explaining, and then closing out grants. So now here at Burning Man, I'm on the other side of the coin, the fun side, <laughs> uh, which is the managing our granting programs. Uh, so I support uh, Katie Hazard, who you all just met. Um, I support her with the BRC Temple and BRC Honoraria. And then I fully manage from, uh, I was gonna say birth to death, but that's not correct because nothing ever dies here. Um, and I, so, mostly because I just, we all love them and so we stay in touch. But the Global Art Grants, mm -hmm. which is art that can happen anywhere except Black Rock City or a regional event. And so that, both of the hats that I wear, the microbial biogeochemistry, my dissertation and research is all on carbon, um, basically the carbon cycle, and looking at what happens when something from the living pool dies and become and is eaten basically by other microorganisms and how those microorganisms either eat other microorganisms or their poop or the dead microorganism become part of the soil humic matrix so it adheres to humic particles or it becomes occluded um, and it can then recycle back into the living pool or it gets sent out as um, back into the atmosphere as CO2 through that, that decomposition process. So the sequestration of the carbon is the adhering to the humic molecules and becoming uh, more and more stabilized, which can be stabilized for you know, anywhere from a month to thousands of years. Yes, and the thousands of years is kind of the key. Yes, yeah, that's, and so that's, that's where it's at. Yeah. So with Burning Man, I do a lot of the, you know, lending my brain mm -hmm. for the carbon side and saying, wait, wait, no, no, no. You know, if it stays mm -hmm. in this fast pool, which is basically any carbon that can go from living organism into another living organism and then is released. So trees are great. We definitely don't, like, don't cut the trees. Yeah. Make more trees. Um, but that's not going to solve the problem because we have carbon coming from this really, really stable pool mm -hmm. of, from fossil deep, fuels deep, down, yeah. deep deep down and now we've released it out into the atmosphere and from there if it gets pulled out into a plant that might be there for you know some years but that plant's going to to you know die and then we're going to go through the process that I just explained. Some of that will go into the soil but a lot of it will a lot of it will respire out. And even with the soils, it's it's such a small percentage that we need to look at the sequestration of carbon that is moving from this fossil fuel into the atmosphere, pull that out until we can get to our, ourselves to a fully neutral place where what we are using is what is already in that fast pool. We're still putting carbon in. Balance. So yeah, so until we carbon, we are car balancing our carbon. We need to look at stabilization. I see an artwork. Me too. Uh -huh. I think it very comfortably can fit into the regenerative technologies category. Yeah. Um, and I hope, I hope you're on board to do some advising and helping me through these. Oh yeah. All right. One. I, I I like both of my hats meshed. Awesome. Yeah. It's perfect. Yeah. It's perfect. Fit. So right. It's so really nice to meet you. It was very nice Thanks to meet for you. popping in. Bye guys. Can't wait for the next time. Me too. <laughs> Um, so that was a really great way to wrap because it brings us back to why we're why all this is important. Um, if you if you ask a question that we haven't answered and we know that there are we will. Of them, we will we're, we have we have a, a track of them here 
but also feel free to send us an email at lagi at landartgenerator.org with questions. And we'll put together answers in the upcoming days um, with the Fly Ranch team, and we will upload a new Q&A document sometime next week. Yeah, we, there's the first round Q&A is already up for your perusal, and the second one will probably double the size of it, I'm guessing. Um, and I just want to put a plug in that, uh, you know, we're, we're out at Fly Ranch most of the year doing interesting things. Um, yes, the design challenge, but we've also got work weekends we do at our campouts. There's uh, Friends of Black Rock leads nature walks every weekend. Um, come out and see us, see the property, hang out. Let's, let's make something special. It's a magical site. We cannot um, encourage you enough to get out there. It's, it's so magical. You'll breathe. You'll think, you'll see, and you will be inspired. Yeah. There's a newsletter on our website that you can sign up for. You, we tell you when we're going out there and doing things. Um, there's wild horses. There's some wild horses. Um, there's, there's, a, there's a lot of beauty there True. Uh, in that special place. And hot springs. Yeah. Uh, no couches. Yeah. Um, thanks, everyone. We'll do this again. Appreciate it. Uh, until next time. Thank you.